started DJing when I was in like sixth grade, going into seventh grade, probably like 12 years old, I think, 12, 13 years old. Started, uh, I bought, I got my first set of DJ equipment uh, on Christmas. I always loved music. I tried to rap when I was younger and I was never really like made for that. I just wanted to do something that sort of involved music. And uh, I thought DJing was the best for me. I actually saw Paulie D in concert when I was, I think in like seventh grade, early seventh grade. And uh, he wasn't very good and it sort of like inspired me. Like if he could pull in a crazy crowd, how he did, and really not be the best DJ, like why couldn't I try to be like a better DJ than he was? Definitely at the time, uh, I was big into house music, so Hardwell obviously was a crazy inspiration to me. Uh, all those sort of big Tiesto, all these big guys. Uh, but getting sort of smaller, uh, DJ Beatbreaker from 92.3, DJ David S., DJ Toro, all those, J. Dobby, all those guys from 92.3 were like a huge inspiration to me. Uh, I, met, I met David S. at one of my first shows uh, at uh, Deco Lounge or Icon Lounge. And uh, I opened up for him, and he was just so, like such a cool dude, and uh, gave me a bunch of pointers doing this, doing this, and uh, he was a huge inspiration to me. And as I sort of started DJing a lot more, getting more music out, throwing out bootlegs, edits, all that stuff, uh, DJ uh, Beatbreaker played one of my bootlegs on 92.3 on like their Saturday Night Dance Factory, and uh, that just was. I was driving home one night just all of a sudden I hear a transition into my own song and I was like what what what's going on I'm like this isn't real life and uh he definitely that was a huge inspiration to me just to sort of stay humble and work harder and uh just, I don't I don't want to settle for just my music being played on the radio like that but he, he was a huge inspiration to me my first show was at Club Mansion in Brick, New Jersey, and uh, I, I actually didn't even get the gig. My friend got the gig, and I was teaching my friend at the time how to DJ, and uh, he told me that it would have been, that he thought I was more ready and prepared than he was. So he said, why don't you take this one, and we'll do the next one together. And I was, I was like, yeah, absolutely, I got this, no problem, like, I could do this easily. And uh, it was, it was, it was crazy, man. It was a crazy. They sold it. They sold the whole place out. And uh, again, I was lucky to have other people, other DJs there, sort of giving me pointers and keeping me like relaxed and just sort of getting me like prepared for it. Uh, one of the one of the guys I remember, uh, DJ Louis Styles. He's uh, he's doing big things right now. He's with Fetty Wap. He's producing for him. And uh, he's he was such a such a big help to me at the time, sort of giving me pointers what to play, how what the crowd likes, what they don't like. And uh, actually I DJed with uh, Mike Gipp too. That was one of the one of the first big uh, DJs I, I spun with. And that was at my first show. And uh, he sort of, after that we kept talking and he gave me like pretty much his whole entire library, club music. And that's where my, my club background and party started, started to form right there. My style, uh, it's very different, I can say. Uh, my style, it's, I like a lot of different, different genres. And what I try to do when I, when I DJ and, and sort of even, even produce is sort of mix those genres together. I'm a fan of, of Hardwell, DJ Mustard, uh, all like the different genres. And what my style is, is sort of just to try to put all those genres together and make that, that, that sort of signature sound. Um, Again, like like Diplo, he was he was a big inspiration. Um, so all those all those sort of DJ Mad guys, they were they're huge inspirations to me, and I try to form my own sound through their sound. See, the thing is, like I, I really can't answer that question. I listen to I listen, I never listen to the same song. Like, like in like a week, I, had, I listened to this this song one day, then I listen to a completely different genre the next day. As I was telling you before, like I listen to a lot of R and B, a lot of a lot of Chris Brown. Uh, probably right now, my favorite song is uh, "Where Are You Now" by Jack U, featuring uh, uh, Justin Bieber. That Justin Bieber killed it. Skrillex and Diplo, they did their thing on it, and it's a banger. I mean, 
they, they, they got a hit right there. Crazy, I, I DJed a Seton Hall party, and uh, I, was, I was DJing, everybody's dancing, everybody's having a great time, and next thing you know, some girl comes over to request a song, trips over my, my speaker, and spills her, her drink all over my equipment. Stuff skipping, stuff nothing, nothing's working. I'm trying to figure out what to do. I made like a quick adjustment and uh, I sort of realized that one side of my equipment was broken and I can only use the other side. So what I did was I turned the other side off and was it was mixing on one side only. And I was doing all my transitions on just one side and uh, that was probably the hardest thing I've probably ever done. Um, but it was up there for craziest. Craziest, uh, craziest gigs. Another different type of crazy. Uh, DJing at uh, let's see, uh, DJing at at Karma nightclub last year, last summer, and I had just these people coming up to me after, telling me they came from New York, they came from uh, from PA, all over New Jersey, just because they heard I was DJing, and they're a big fan of my my music on my SoundCloud, big Jersey Club fan. Uh, hip hop, trap, uh, house music, they're all just just big fans of mine. And that for their prom weekend, they heard I was DJing. And they said that just to make their experience even better, they said, let's go see a DJ on my show while we're, while we're at our prom weekend. So that was probably one of the coolest things I've heard. Oh. Probably the one at, at, at the patio. I'm not even gonna lie. Like, Probably one of my smallest gigs ever, but the fact that I got to put Dave, Dave Harris, and my brother Joe Giuliano like on, that I got them to perform, and that that was sort of like me seeing that my fan base grew, so that I could start putting other people on. When I was reaching out for people that had a big fan base to sort of put me on, that was probably the, the, one of my like favorite favorite gigs. Just so because I, I saw I was able to DJ for them, and I saw that that they're sort of using my, my crowd that, that we brought in to build their fan, to start their fan base and sort of build, build their style. Probably, probably Kid Capri. Kid Capri was one of the, the most humble and, and helpful uh, DJs I've ever met. Uh, he he gave me so many like tips and pointers and he like honestly I didn't even know it was him because that's how humble he was. I didn't know I was I was sitting next to one of the biggest DJs and uh, he he was he was so humble, sort of showing me like some songs. What what do you hey what do you think about this? What do you think about this? And then asking me like do you have anything that I could hear? Like do you have any new songs coming out? Let me hear some songs that are out. Let me hear your most played songs. And he was just such a cool dude, sort of giving me tips on my music and giving me tips on performing. And uh, the fact that how humble he was with as big as his name is, is what blew me away and sort of motivated me to sort of model myself after him. Definitely uh, going out to everybody, all like the new DJs, producers, just people on the come up. Um, it's, it's not easy. If... If fame were to happen overnight, everybody would be famous. It's not easy. I, I'm not famous. I'm far from it. And uh, I, I work my ass off every single night. Every night, every day. Like, I'm still in high school. I bring my, uh, my production laptop right here. I bring this in my backpack every single day to school. And in my math class, in my English class, in my lunch, in, in my gym, in any of those classes, you'll see me with headphones on and on my laptop. Because this is my passion, and if it's your passion, you'll learn to do it anywhere. We go out. To, I go out to eat with my family. I go here. I go here. I'm always having my laptop on me, always trying to. Every time I think of an idea, lay it down. Uh, if it's really a passion, it really means something to you. You'll you'll find time to work. Also, with with getting like your name out there, you're gonna get rejected probably a thousand more times than you get noticed. And don't let ever let that like discourage you or anything like that. It's it's part of the game. It's part it's part of the grind. It's it's tough, but it all pays off. And uh, just just keep working, stay motivated, keep trying to collaborate with others because that's that's 
the best with getting your name out there is collaborations. Um, but stay true to yourself, stay humble, and don't ever let anything get get to your head. Don't let your head get too big, and because that's that's what people like. People like humbled, humbled uh, artists and and stuff like that. So that's definitely my my piece. Show me what's on your mind. So uh, once again, you could follow me at DJMI973, all one word, on SoundCloud, Instagram, and Twitter. Uh, my SoundCloud, you can hear all my newest tracks coming out. I just started this new R&B Jersey Club uh, style of music. I just started that. You can check out my, my latest tracks. Um, for my, my Twitter and Instagram, follow me, mention me, uh, shout me out, I'll follow you back. Uh, Facebook, you just type in DJM.I. Pretty simple. Uh, once again, thank you for all the support everybody you've been giving me. And uh, follow me, and I'll, I'll follow back. Thank you for the support. Shout out to the Team Reckless, first of all, for putting me on. Uh, shout out to Stevie G, Trix, Max Blue, Trey, Paulie. Shout out to all y'all from Team Reckless. Like, thanks for putting me on, man. Y'all, y'all, really, y'all really still behind me with this whole movement. Uh, shout out to 4B. 4B's been a homie, homie since I started. Uh, young kid, I'm Marquis. Y'all put me on with, with, with the collabs, and you guys really came through for me. I appreciate y'all. Shout out to Jules for all DJ Jules for all the support. Uh, he just a- endless support. He always gives me, and I appreciate that. Uh, shout out to Mikey P. That's that's my homie from Karma. Him and I DJ there pretty much every single time I DJ there. Uh, and once again, Kyle Hughes. That's that's my homie. Shout out to you for. You're always like, taking me through to your events, you know, I show you support, you, t- you show me support, like, I appreciate all you guys showing me that support, and it means a lot, and, uh, just once again, just thank you for everybody, I forgot you, I apologize, just thank you for everybody for showing me continuous amount of support, uh, it really means a lot, and, and I, I don't forget about y'all, don't worry. Uh, real quick, shout out to my family, uh, Always since I started showing me support, coming to all my events that they could get into. I did a lot of teen events, so my, my, my parents weren't really able to get into that. But shout out to my brother, uh, Dave Harris, uh, just everybody that continuously showed me showed me support. And uh, just just I want to thank thank my family for always like standing behind me with everything I wanted to do. And uh, if I wanted if I wanted a speaker, they would come through. But I, I throw them some money back just to show them that it's, it's mutual. But uh, any, anything I needed, anything I wanted done, anything I needed help with, they always came through for me, and I appreciate that. <laughs>